Hello, hello, more dimmers here, and today I would like to thank you for all the warm reactions in my last video. A lot of views, a lot of likes, a lot of good comments. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, why that happened? Maybe because that was video about Bobby Fischer and very educational one because it was about the trap set up by Bobby Fischer. Very famous uh, trap. So the chess theory is now much more uh, rich than before. And today I would like to do the same combo. So we have Bobby Fischer an educational video, but probably much more important. We're gonna see Bobby Fischer brilliancy in the totally drawish position. So we can learn how to break the position like that and how to get the advantage. Uh, so the game was played in New York 1963. Uh, in the United States Chess Championship. And we have Robert Byrne. This is the brother of Donald Byrne. We know him already because Donald Byrne played the game of the century with Bobby Fischer. If you haven't seen that, check this video. This is the best game in 20th century according to, uh, you know, a lot of uh, commentators. So very important, very enjoyable game. I really recommend that. And Robert Byrne was a grandmaster, very strong player. He's ranking 2608 and he was already 35 years old. And we have Bobby Fischer, who is already 20 years old. So I changed his miniature. And in 1963, uh, he was already number three in the world, uh, according to the uh, ranking. So only Tigran Petrosian and Mikhail Botvinnik uh, were better. But uh, Bobby Fischer still have to wait, uh, you know, a couple of years to become the world champion. His ranking at that time 2759 and Bobby Fischer gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's jump into this exciting game. Robert Byrne as white open with d4. We have knight on f6, we have c4, g6, g3, c6 and now bishop on g2. So king's Indian defense with the fianchetto, both sides gonna do the fianchetto and d5. And here uh, I would like to show you some of the comments uh, to this game uh, by some commentators but also by Bobby Fischer, mostly by Bobby Fischer, what he thought about this game. Also we have one comment um, of the Robert Burns, so it's also very very interesting. Uh, so here Bobby Fischer uh, wrote that queen on b3 uh, would be probably the best because it maintains more tensions. Uh, so if white want to win, they should maintain more tension uh, on d5 and also on b7. That's the idea of Bobby Fischer how to continue the game. However, it seems like uh, Robert Byrne uh, just play for a draw. So he play very solid. C takes on d5, C takes on d5 and knight on c3. We have bishop on g7 as planned. We have e3, we have castle and now not knight on f3, rather knight g on e2. So now this bishop can't really easily go to uh, g4 to pin the knight on f3. Uh, so this is the most popular line. We have knight on c6 and castle by white. And look at the position, it's nearly symmetrical. The only differences are uh, here, the knight and the pawn, okay? And here also the knight and the pawn. The rest are completely uh, symmetrical. And these positions are usually very difficult to win by any side. So it's really good to know, you know, how to break the positions like that. Uh, moreover, Bobby Fischer play b6 and we have b3. So a symmetrical answer uh, continues. And here Bobby Fischer uh, gives another comment. He wrote, uh, if white play something like knight on f4, that would be in the similar fashion like in 1937 game of Stalberg versus Floor. So Bobby Fischer had all the games from the past, you know, in his memory and he know uh, what is going on. So for example, e6, that was in that game game, b3, uh, bishop a6 attacking the rook and then uh, after a couple of moves 
bishop a3 with the same fashion uh, we would have also very symmetrical position uh, just these uh, knights are you know uh, not the same but but it's also very difficult to do anything so uh, that was possible but not much difference here burn play b3 so uh, again the same moves and now bishop a6 bishop a3 so this bishop pins actually the knight and this bishop pins the pawn so pawn can't move and we have very interesting comment here uh, according to the thumbnail if you if you asking why the, it's the witchcraft so uh, mr kirby from south african chess quarterly from the chess magazine he wrote after white's 11th move it's this uh, bishop a3 move i should adjudicate his position as slightly superior and at worst completely safe so the position of white is completely safe that's what all commentators said to turn this into a mating position in 11 moves is more witchcraft than chess Quite honestly, I do not see the man who can stop Bobby at this time. So, can you imagine? We have completely boring symmetrical position and this gonna, you know, turn into the mating position in just 11 moves. So pay attention how to do that. Again, let's highlight some differences. Only this knight and this knight and this pawn and this pawn all the rest are totally the same okay total symmetry so let's see what to do pay attention rook e8 first of course uh, getting away from this pin so uh, the pawn now now can move uh, we have queen on d2 and now not e6 e6 was also considered by bobby fisher he played e5 e5 and bobby fisher commented i was a bit worried about weakening my queen pawn uh, on d5 uh, but felt that the tremendous activity obtained by my minor pieces would permit white no time to exploit it e6 would be probably draw so this is why he didn't play e6 as black he want to win and bobby fisher was known that as black he wanted to play for the win uh, so we have d takes on e5 of course knight takes on e5 and what white achieved uh, they created this isolated pawn an isolated pawn is the weakness and the strength at the same time first is the weakness because it doesn't have the support of other uh, pawns so it's very easy to attack and in this particular position look at this bishop attacks d5 knight attacks queen attacks the rook the rooks are coming so also can uh, you know attack the the pawn and also the pawn can be blocked very easily it can be blocked so it doesn't look like it's anything dangerous however now it's a very important moment because this is what bobby fisher calculated uh, now we're gonna have the problem of the wrong rook this is very known problem in chess which rook you should move now this rook or maybe this rook uh, because definitely it should go on the on the d file uh, but which rook so bobby fisher calculated uh, rook a on d1 like this is much stronger move and he still estimated his position as much better so for example queen on d7 with the plan on uh, queen on f5 and this knight if jump on f3 this can be very very dangerous for the white king so queen on c2 for example that's uh, one way of defending uh, but now queen on g4 and we still have that problem so h3 now queen c8 still staying on this diagonal but also pinning the knight that would be very interesting bishop on b2 uh, bringing some defender to the to the knight and the bishop is already not needed on this diagonal and now knight on e4 uh, and the knight can take the knight because that's uh, undefended piece the queen is undefended piece queen on b1 
and this position is already better for black because if knight takes on c3 uh, then look at this this knight gonna hang and if the knight takes uh, then of course black can win the exchange so that's just the one example there are more tactical issues here but Robert Byrne didn't play this move, didn't play the rook on d1. He played more logical move, uh, rook f on d1. More logical, because now this rook stays on the semi-open d file, and this rook actually can come and be active on the open c file. So it looks like very, very logical, but... Bobby Fischer wrote about that move Add another to those melancholy case histories entitled the wrong rook. So he considered that the rook is wrong. But how to exploit it? Can you find the, the moves which can exploit that? Bobby Fischer found and he played knight on d3. So black want to play knight on e4 with the threat of attacking f2. That would be very dangerous attack. So for example, knight on d4 and I will just show you what would happen after uh, knight on e4. So uh, white would not have much choice. Knight on e4, d takes on e4, bishop b2, rook c8. And black has superior position here with this knight, which actually, you know, can't be moved. And if exchange for the light square bishop, that would be disaster if black still can have a um, light square bishop. That would be very dangerous for position of white king. So Byrne try something else. He play queen on c2, but queen on c2 actually gives black the opportunity to make a very beautiful continuation. So all of this, you know, asymmetrical position start to be very, very interesting. Can you spot the tactic now? Uh, not difficult because I just show you a couple of motives, but Bobby Fischer played knight on f2. Uh, so sacrificing the, the knight, of course, white have to take, otherwise they're gonna be down the material. So uh, king takes on f2. Knight g4 with check, king g1, and now knight e3, forking the queen, forking the rook, forking the bishop. So that's a family fork, not with the king, but white have to decide what to do. So definitely queen is the most valuable piece. So burn play queen on d2. And here, what would you play next? Take the rook? Take the bishop or maybe something else. What would you play in this position? Uh, actually, if you play knight on d1, I will just show you knight on d1, what would happen? Uh, knight can take on d1, that's obvious because rook on e2, uh, remember about this bishop, and then after queen on f4, rook e1, king f2, and for example, queen e8, checkmate is coming, uh, taking the rook is coming, that's uh, just a disaster. Queen on d1 is also impossible because of bishop on e2. And after knight on e2, bishop a1, and now this knight is hanging, so uh, it's also impossible. So the only move is rook d1. And after, for example, rook c8 and bishop d5, position is very comfortable to play for white look at this all the pieces are active and developed and are these are actually uh, two knights for the rook so white should have very easy gameplay here but bobby fisher didn't take the rook he valued the bishop as you know a much better piece because it's defender of the king so this bishop is much stronger than the rook that's how uh, Bobby Fischer evaluated this position and he was right. He played knight on g2. And now we have very interesting comment after the game by Robert Byrne. This dazzling move came as the shocker. The culminating combination is of such depth that even at the very moment at which I resigned, both grandmasters who were commenting on the play for the spectators in a separate room believed I had a one game. Can you believe that? The grandmaster estimate this position as 
better for white. White is winning. Okay, let's see what happened in the game. We have king on g2 and now what would you play as black? What would you play? How would you continue this attack? There is only one way to, to win that game. This is the only really one continuation and Bobby Fischer uh, found it. So the idea is of course bring the bishop on b7 uh, and attack the king. So Bobby Fischer has to bring as many attackers now to the you know exposed king as possible. Uh, but that would be impossible because after bishop on b7, knight d4 and the pawn is blocker. This bishop would be very sad looking at own pawn. So first what Bobby Fischer play is d4 d4 sacrificing this pawn and white have to accept this sacrifice if not then for example moving the knight then this pawn gonna move to d3 attack the knight and also this bishop uh, would attack the rook and also this rook can jump then to uh, e2 uh bishop helping to control that this passed pawn would be very dangerous so uh it's impossible to play anything else so we have knight on d4 and now bishop on b7 okay so now bobby fisher commented in his book the king is at the black's mercy okay and yeah white have not much to do if king on g1 then we have very beautiful uh, tactic. You can actually pause the video and find the winning combination. It's very nice. Uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. So what would happen, of course, is bishop on d4 and it's everything forced. Queen on d4 and now rook e1 deflecting this rook. Uh, if rook takes, then uh, the queen is lost. And if king on f2, um, then simply queen on d4, rook on d4 and winning more material and winning the game. So that's uh, one option. So uh, Robert Byrne play king on f1. And here Bobby Fischer play another best move in the position, queen on d7. Queen on c8 was also possible, of course, with the idea of jumping to h3. And white has not much to do. So in this position, Robert Byrne resigned the game. And Fischer writes about this. A bitter disappointment. I would hoped for queen f2, queen h3, king g1 and now rook on e1 this is what bobby fisher wanted to you know show uh, all this combination would shine so uh, of course queen can take because of a checkmate so rook e1 is the only move and now bishop d4 bishop d4 pinning this queen and then queen can take the the bishop uh, because of the of the checkmate so that would be the end and Robbie Fisher write Bishop d4 with mate to follow shortly actually uh, it's a bit funny because uh, our friend a mighty stockfish doesn't agree that would be shortly because after knight on e4 that's not gonna be shortly Bishop f2 King f2, black is of course winning, but it's not shortly. Queen h2, king e3, rook e8, and now king d3, and we can play some more moves. Of course, black is winning easily now. The rook is lost and the game is lost. If king on d4, that, that actually would be uh, shortly. Rook d8, king c4, and now queen d3, and king b4, and checkmate is coming. So definitely not shortly. That's just a funny accent at the end. But yeah, I agree with Bobby Fischer that Robert Byrne should play a couple of moves just to show, you know, um, this queen f2 and just to show this beautiful combination. You know, this would be beautiful, especially this bishop on d4 pinning the queen. This would be brilliant. This is how the game should end. Uh, because, you know, Donald Byrne, when the Bobby Fischer was 13 years old, uh, led Bobby to uh, checkmate him in the game of the century, but Robert resigned in this position after queen on d7. So I hope you learned something that symmetrical positions 
uh, are not always boring and drawish and you can exploit any difference in symmetry uh, by very very creative way so i hope you like this video if yes press like if you don't like it press unlike leave the comment what games would you like to see on my channel it's very important for me because i create for you and uh, yeah if you don't want to miss any other brilliant games of the best players in the world and other chess uh, content press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one